should be going. Okay, we should be going. All right, so we're going to be talking about logarithms. Why are we talking about logarithms? For one reason, because card appreciation. We're going to be talking about card appreciation over the course of the next couple weeks. Okay, so pretty important because it's not the biggest purchase you're making in your life, but it is probably the next biggest purchase you'll make in your life. Okay, more than likely, you guys are going to start making some decent money, then you're going to want to go drop it on a card. Okay. And when you do, you're going to be like, ah, oh, I'm making $400 a month. I can afford that new silver auto. You can't. Okay? So we're going to, talk, we're going to be talking about um, what cars do over time, how they depreciate, how fast they depreciate, and how they're not investments, period. They don't ever make you money. Okay? Or well, very rarely do they make you money. We'll talk about those cases, too. So one of the things to understand about car depreciation is how it depreciates. Right? So it doesn't depreciate like this. And if it did, I'd say, hey, you know what? Spend a lot of money on car a lot of money on cars might not be that big of a deal. Because it never depreciates like that. It depreciates like this. Anybody know the difference between green and red? One steeper. Right? One steeper. But yeah, this is I mean they're both bad. Why? Because they're going downhill. Okay? But green is what we call what do we call that math? Straight line. Straight line, line, and pink. Oh, and arrow? Lin linear. Linear, right? And then this is called exponential, right? You're used to seeing an exponential like this, and that is the best things in life. The best things in life exponentially grow, except for the flu. That's not a good thing. But the worst things in life exponentially decay, okay? So exponential is curved. Okay, and in order to understand how curved lines work, you have to understand how logarithms work. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the just what I call the nitty gritty on logarithms. I'm not going to get into the full details of this. If you were to take a normal algebra two course, they would spend a quarter of the year on logarithms, talking about the property of logarithms, how to manipulate them, how to do all kinds of different things. I'm going to give you the bare basics on this, what you would need to be an adult in understanding logarithms, and that's it. Okay, so I'm going to keep it very uh, quick, ready to go. All right, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so logarithms, how does that work? Oops, that's not what we want there. All right, so you probably see these. Here you go, boys. You probably see these types of problems on the board. Why don't you try these first three? How would you solve this? Those that were in my office two class last year better not to do this. How do we solve this? If I have something to the fifth power equals 33, how do you figure out what that thing is? I don't know what it is. It's something raised to the fifth. Not divided by five. That's the right idea. If it was five times the number, it gives me 33. Then I would divide it by five. So what do I do? It's not divide because it's not being multiplied. It's being taken to a power. So it's the opposite of the power. Not like a square root, right? So like if you had x squared equals 64, you're absolutely right. You take the square root of both sides. That's not a square root. That's a... The square root has two, so it's the fifth power, or a fifth root is what we call it, okay? We do a fifth root. So we do a fifth root is exactly what we do. So we're going to take a fifth root here and a fifth root there. Now, what does a fifth root look like? It looks like a square root, but it has a little five right there, okay? That's what a fifth root looks like, okay? So it's pretty easy. You just take the fifth root of each side, okay? And then when you take the fifth root of something to the fifth power, what do you think happens? What do you think happens to these fives? They go right now. Gone. All right, so cancel, cancel. You're left with X. X on this side in the fifth root of 33. You're probably looking at me like, oh, how the heck do I know what that is? Well, if you were doing this by hand, yeah, you would be in trouble, okay? But luckily, you live in the right the right time frame in, in math history to where your calculator can do all that fun work for you. If you live back in the day, you have a gigantic book just for fours or just for, yeah, just for fives. And you'd have to flip through until you found it. It would be a pain in the butt. And our class would be full of all these big books for logarithms. Now it's all on one button on your calculator. So you're welcome to, to whoever invented the calculator, I guess. Okay, so let's talk about how we do a fifth root of 33. It's pretty easy to do. You're going to hit control. You're going to hit this little carrot button, right? And it's going to put a little spot there. You put a little five there. Now you're in the fifth root. If you want to take the fifth root of 33, put a 33 inside, hit enter. Done. So fifth root of 33, I get 
6, 6, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what does that mean? It means x is 2.01234. You can keep going if you want to, whatever. That's far enough. Okay, so that's how you find a, a um, that's how you do a fifth root on that example. Okay, and then now we're going to take a look at this one. What do you think you're going to do on this one? The same thing. Same thing. Yeah, it's just the seventh root. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to take the seventh root of this side, seventh root of that side. Okay, so go ahead and try that in your calculator, see if you can do it, see if you know how to find the keystrokes. Keystrokes is the half, half this battle. So that's right here, control, this button, seven, and drop it in, two, nine, eight, three, enter. Okay, 3.0 oh, x equals 3.136. That's close enough. Okay? Now, if you're not sure if that's right, if you think maybe I'm just trying to pull some uh, magic math over your head that you don't believe that it works, try it backwards. If I take that number, okay, and I raise it to the seventh power, watch what happens. I get 283, or two, 2,983. Okay, so it works. That's how you do it. So you're just undoing it. Now, I know this isn't logarithms yet, but this is kind of the route you need to take. So why, I'm going to leave that last problem for you. You try that last problem by yourself, see if you can figure it out. Oh, if you're using one of those old school calculators, it might not be quite as easy. You might have to do something we call a change of base form. Oh, does it have the button for it? It didn't get that number. Okay, so let me see that. Let me see that. Oh, it's because it's rounded. That decimal keeps going forever, right? Keep going, 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 going. That. So, yeah. mine took the exact value. But if you were to use the exact value, you can go to this. You're not close to the right number, right? I chose not to wrap pizza. That's a wrap? Actually, they have for you. Two bucks. Yeah. Two bucks. Maybe I'll buy a couple. Are they good? Give me a. Uh, uh, What's the size? They're like this big. Okay. Yeah, hurry up. All right, so let's take this one right here, eighth root. So you take the eighth root here, you take the eighth root there. You take the eighth root, so it's going to cancel, give you x equals the eighth root of 902, whatever that is. 2.341, and I trust you, so that's probably right. Okay? So that's it. That's, that's all you got to do. That's pretty easy, right? Yeah, good. All right, so let's bump it up a level. Let's take you to a, a world of math you've never seen before. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. It's like a, it's like the, the, uh, okay. What about these? What are you going to do here? This is going to be a dude. You can't run from it. You won't get your answer. Do the opposite of the square root. Okay. Ah, uh, well, the opposite of the square root is squaring. But the problem here is that the X is in the variable. What? The weird number in, and then type in. Well, the problem is anytime there's an X in the exponent, you can't solve it that way. You have to manipulate its form. And this is where logarithms come in handy. So in that box that says the big idea, right? I think I have that right here. Let's see. Four of three. Okay, the big idea box, I want you to write this down. This goes inside the big idea box, okay? Ready? It goes like this. X, I'm going to use some colors here too because that's going to help us out. X to Y equals Z, all right? And that converts. So there's two different forms. This is the form it is in now. We're going to convert it into a form like this. Log, I know this looks weird, but I promise you it's not nearly as complicated as it looks. X. Let's see, a Z is going to be blue equals, this equals black, so equals um, Y. No, Y is green. Okay, so, all right, guys, put this in the dotted box. Big idea. Really? That is a quarter's worth of material all in one in one small slide um, in output two. That's, this is really the, in a nutshell. What does it do? What does this little conversion do? It takes the exponent from the variable and bumps it down to the main line where you can solve it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so the logarithm, I know it looks crazy, I know it looks tricky, but it's not, it's not. Okay? Alright, so let's go here. What you need to do to recognize and put it in the right form is you gotta go spot for spot, color for color. You ready? Alright, 
So you tell me first off, this first problem, is it in this side or this side? First side. First side. It's in this side. So if you want to take this form, we're going to convert it from this form to that form. You got it? All right, here we go. So it's going to be log. All right, now you tell me, this 4 represents what color? Red. Where does the red go in my log? Below. Down below, the subscript. So the 4 goes down below. You see how I did that? All right, what does this X represent in my, in my color scheme here? My, my color scheme here. Y. y. So the Y goes on the other side of the equal sign. So the Y is going to go over here, and we made our Y green, so we'll make our... I'm sorry, we'll put our X here. Okay. All right, good. Now, this 64 represents what color? Blue. All right, so 64 is going to go here. So 64 goes right there in blue. And then there you go. Now, I know you're looking at that like, well, what does that mean? You just went from one form I don't know to another form I don't know. But this is what I like to call calculator ready. This is calculator ready. Okay? Oh, you guys are already a step ahead of me. You guys want to try to beat me there? You're not going to beat me there. Okay, you guys are good. All right, so if it's if it's calculated ready, meaning it has no variables in the log at all. So here we go. We type it in like this. We go, we go. What do we do? Hmm. What do we do? Oh, there it is. Okay, we hit Control. We hit this uh, button right here. So Control, um, the ten to the x. Okay. And down below, you put a four. Up top, you put a sixty-four. And then you hit Enter. And then Voila, three. So X is three. That's pretty easy to do, right? So again, like I said, this is just the nitty gritty. There's a lot of other things you can do with it. Can but you use like say four to the power of the third. Yes. That's exactly what it should be if we did it right. So four to the third power is doing our calculator. Sixty-four. Exactly what we want. Now that's going to come in handy. I know it seems like, well, why are we even learning this? What does that have to do with carbon appreciation? We're going to be talking about time. How long is it going to take a car to depreciate to a certain rate, to a certain value? Well, when you're solving for time, that's an exponent. Or that's a variable in the exponent, which you're going to have to use a logarithm for. That's the only way of doing it. Okay, that's the only way I know of doing it. Okay? All right, so let's let's try this one out here. Uh, if we're in the exponential form, we want to go to the logarithmic form, let's write that down. So it's going to be log. What guy is going to go low? My X goes low, or my red X. So what color is, what color is my red guy? 16, or what color is my record? Yeah, 16. Okay, 16 goes low. Okay, and then my Z should come next. What's my Z up here? 1,024. 1,024, okay. And then that's going to equal X, right? So we worked that out. That's calculator ready. You're just going to drop it in your calculator, see what you get. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. Okay, so control. 10 to the X, 16, bump it over, 1024. Okay, I get 2.5. Is that what you guys got? All right, good. Yes, sir. Don't ask me if you're jumping ahead. If you're jumping ahead, you better know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, then don't ask. I'll get there, I promise. Don't worry. The, the, the beautiful thing, the beautiful uh, math is on your way. It's not there yet. Huh? What are we doing? Oh, well, Mr. Pants Pants. Well, we'll be done in a sec, and we can work on some other stuff. All right. So, here we go. Let's take a look at this guy right here. Uh, how's this going to convert? This is going to go to a log, right? What's going to go low? Eight. Eight's going to go low. What's going to go in the middle? 19483, and then that's going to be equals X. Drop that in your calculator. What do you get? 475. You know, I think that's why I tried to make it, so that sounds about right. Okay, so there you go. So that means if you take 4.75 to the 8th to the eighth, uh, um, power, did I say that backwards? If you take 8 to the 4.75 power, you should get 19,480. Can I scroll up? I can't scroll up. That was the last slide. I'll catch you here in a sec. All right. So that's how you do that. Let's talk about these real quick, and then we'll get moving, and we'll be done. Okay, so what if it's not an exponential form? What if it's already in a logarithm form? How do you switch it? Okay, so if it's already in a logarithm, how do you switch it to solve? Now, this is not, well, this first one, is it calculator ready? This first one right here? 
Yeah, that's all good. You can just drop that right in. That's no big deal. This is just x equals the calculator, whatever that says. The calculator says, what's the calculator say? What does the calculator say? Let's see. You know what? I believe you. 5.73. Okay, so that's calculator ready. All you have to do is type that in. Let's have a look at the next problem. Is this one calculator ready? No, because there's a variable with the log. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is, if it's in one form you don't like, convert it to the other form and see if you like it better. That's all you can do. So let's try it out. If you were to convert this from here back to the other way, here's an example here, right? So what is it going to convert to then? It's going to be what? Uh, so x, x, five, x to the fifth <laughs> equals 903. And that came right from that big idea box. Okay, you just converted it. See how I converted it? So look, x is low, x goes big. 903 is in the middle. 903 goes on the other side. 5 is on by itself, 5 goes in the next one. See how that conversion? So there you go. All right, so now you're looking at it like, oh, I still don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. Because what do you do? Yep, you do the fifth root. You do the fifth root of both sides, and you're done. So the fifth root of this cancels it, and then the fifth root of 903 is some kind of number. I don't know. Let's find out what it is. Is that what it is? No. Is it? Okay. Well, I'm already there. I'm Oops. No, I'm not. See, this is what I get for not trusting. Three point nine zero. Oh. I gotta fix it now. Now I'm already committed. Hold on. There we go. Three point nine. Yeah. Okay. That works. All right. Three point nine. I believe now. Okay. Three. Now I believe. Yeah. After I goofed it up twice, now I believe you. Okay. What about this one? I think you can do this one probably by by hand, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. If is it calculator ready? No. So what do you gotta do? You gotta switch it. Now there's a little. You'll get used to seeing these the more you do. You probably won't do enough of them in this class to get used to it, but in a traditional algebra two class you would. But let's see. Nine to the third power equals x. That's the re way you read it, and that's the same conversion as that big box idea. Okay. All right, so 9 to the third power equals x. Well, 9 to the third power, that's 9 times 9, which is 81. 81 times 9 is 729. 729, I think, right? I want to check it. 729. Okay. Okay. There we go. So we're done. That's not too bad. Okay. So we're well on our way here. We only got one. Let's do one more problem, then the rest are all you. Okay? Uh, 729. How did you get that? Okay, because I converted. All right, how did I get that? I converted this to this form using that big box idea, which is right over here, right? So I converted to this form, and 9 to the third power, you can type in your calculator, you'll get 729. And that's it. No, 9 raised to the third power. Did you take 9 raised to the third power? And you didn't get 729? Are we doing longer? No, that's just nine and a third power. We'll see. Oh, so you're, you're, you're taking the ninth root. So look, I nine raise the third. Oh, okay. There you go. All right, you're good. All right, let's do one more. Then the last two are on you. So here we go. If we're looking at this one for converting, it's going to be three to the fourth power equals x, and then you work that out. Three to the fourth power is three, nine, twenty-seven, eighty-one. Right? Eighty-one. So x equals 81, and that's it. So these two are on you. And make sure you know this. We're going to have a little, there will be a couple of these problems sprinkled in with the quiz with card depreciation and mortgage rates. Okay? So make sure you understand that. That's all you. Video is done.